I think he's more confident. He has uh, a greater sense of himself. I definitely see her differently. I really look at her as a, a growing and developing individual that definitely has a set of feelings and experiences that are very separate and apart from mine. I'm Ann Pello, and I'm a teacher of three, four, five-year-olds at Hilltop Children's Center. So there's this movement right now to test young children, to push academics down into the four-year-olds to three-year-olds to two-year-olds, and then to test them on what they're learning. Are they getting their alphabet? Are they getting their numbers? But it's crazy because it's not how kids learn, and it's not how they tell us what they're learning. My name is Andy Smallman, and I'm the director of the Puget Sound Community School. PSCS is an educational place for 10 to 18 year olds. Our school day starts with what we call check-in. We go through things like announcements, we'll go through the classes that have been scheduled for that day, and it's important to point out that any activity on our scheduling board is an optional activity. When people feel good about themselves and are in an environment where it's meaningful, everybody wants to improve themselves. Everybody wants to learn that next thing that's going to carry them to the next level. So um, when you are truly in a setting that, that lets you really discover what's important to you. It's amazing what young people do. What I think is important has very little to do with those skill sets, but has everything to do with dispositions, with what kids understand about themselves as learners, as people in relationship with other people. And I think what we can be about in our teaching of children is cultivating dispositions in children that help them know I'm a person who can have a big idea and see it through to the end. Or, I'm a person who can tell you what I'm thinking about and I can hear what you think about that and together we can do something. I'm a person who's curious about the world and I ask questions and I get excited about figuring out the answers. And with those things in place, they're going to figure out these little academic skills. And they're going to figure them out in much more meaningful ways than they ever will by flashcards and cues and little you know, memory games. But in fact, they're going to figure things out because they have a passion for it and because they know that they're people who figure things out. Imagine a household where a child, a baby, was never allowed to move around at all. They'd never learned to move because they'd never had the opportunity to move. But nobody's standing over them and saying, okay, here is step one to learning to walk, and we're going to have our drill and practice now. And there's the 10-month-old who is trying to do it a little early, and they're put back down on the floor. Or there's the 14-month-old who's doing it a little bit late, so we've created walking disability classes for, for this child. The idea here is that there's a time frame for everyone, for anything. They just need to be in an environment that's going to let it happen. So this kid is going to learn to walk because that's what human beings do. They see it around them. They see its value. They see mom and dad walking, talking, reading, math, whatever the case is. Those things are going to be seen and the student is going to go or the child's going to go, oh, what the heck's that thing? Oh, that's, that's reading. Huh, that's sure interesting. And they want to do it because that's what's valued. And they feel good about themselves, so they're willing to take a risk. Well, what I like about PSCS is that you have a lot of freedom. Kenan, to me, is a good example of kind of a student who, the first thing that he did is work to become very comfortable here. And some, what people would call kind of basic academic skills, weren't high on his priority. We believe that in time, that's something that he's going to just embrace and be excited by. He will learn faster. He'll learn them forever because he's motivated to do it. That's what's happening now. Um, I like math a lot. Really? Mm -hmm. Did you always like math? Um, no, I didn't. I hated math. He came to me and said, hey, Andy, I'd really like to shore up my multiplication skills. He comes and meets with me three days a week. He not only is excited to do it during that scheduled time, but he'll take his book and he'll work on it in other settings. And that's one of the things that is real common here. She'll see a student who is working on something that they want to master, and they don't want to stop. Um, they want to keep doing it because now they're engaged, now it's meaningful, now it's exciting. What we want to do is create this invisible, sturdy, strong, nurturing container for kids. And when they're held like that, um, what they do is stunning and beautiful and breathtaking. And, and it's like flowers unfolding. They're, they're so beautiful. And it's this joy to be with them in that way. <laughs>